Hello and welcome to Tag One Team Talks, the podcast and blog of Tag One Consulting. On today's show, we're going to be talking with Luca Lusso, the maintainer of Web Profiler and XHProf, about performance tuning applications using these really popular tools. We also have a sneak preview into some of the new developments and features that are coming in the Drupal 10 version of Web Profiler, which is coming out later this year. I'm Michael Myers, the managing director of Tag One Consulting. I'm based out of New York City. Tag One is the number two all-time contributor to Drupal. We build large-scale applications with Drupal, as well as many other technologies for global 500s and organizations in every sector, including Google, the New York Times, the European Union, the University of Michigan, and the Linux Foundation. I'm joined today by Fabian Franz, the VP of Software Engineering at Tag One, who's based out of Switzerland. Uh, Fabian is the core maintainer for Drupal, who oversees the development of Drupal Core. He's also a co-maintainer of BigPipe, Dynamic Page Cache, and responsible for many of the performance-related aspects of Drupal. And of course, our special guest today is Luca Lusso, uh, aka Lusso Luca on Drupal.org, <laughs> who is based out of Italy. Um, Luca has uh, been a member of the Drupal community for about 16 years now. And prior to joining Spark Fabric, where he's currently the lead developer, uh, Luca was the head of software architecture at WellNet. So, Luca, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for, for inviting me to, to this talk. Definitely. Before we jump in and talk about the modules, I thought it'd be really great to give folks a little bit of a background in history. Uh, I'm curious, how did you first discover Drupal? What did you use it for? Like, How did you become a member of the community? Okay. <clears throat> um, probably the... The, the first website I developed with, uh, with Drupal was uh, using Drupal 6 in 2007, probably, uh, for a university. So a friend of mine asked me to, to help him develop a, a website for, for his course at the, at the university. And uh, <clears throat> I, I look for a system to build it and I discovered Drupal. I banged my head about six months to understand how to use it. Uh, but uh, at the end, I discovered a system uh, that was very, very powerful uh, at the time, uh, comparing with other, other systems. And so I start using it uh, for every other <clears throat> project. Um, and uh, I joined uh, WellNet. It was the, my previous company that was a, a Drupal agency here in Italy. And from starting from them, I basically always use Drupal for everything. So you're, you're credited with hundreds of contributions. Um, I'm so curious, why did you first get involved in contributing the platform? And how on earth did that spiral into your maintaining 34 modules? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, no, I, I don't remember exactly what was, uh, my, my first contribution. Uh, the biggest one uh, is, is Web Profiler, and I, I started it because uh, <clears throat> I, I'm also used Symfony for some other projects. Uh, and uh, when uh, Drupal switches to, to, to Symfony as a as core layer, I wonder <clears throat> why uh, we cannot have the same uh, web, uh, web debug toolbar. Uh, as uh, as Symfony provides, uh, so I I started uh, to explore uh, what we have to do in Drupal to have the same uh, feature like in like in Symfony, and probably uh, at that point uh, uh, I started contributing uh, actively to, to to the Drupal community, uh, and then. Uh, uh, with other modules like uh, XH Proof or, or Monologue or other modules that are unique for the Italian market uh, uh, to do, for example, uh, uh, remote authentication with the, the Italian identity provider. Um, one question to you, what's besides Web Profiler, which probably is your favorite, um, what is um, your... Um, other favorite contract module that you've written? This is an interesting question. Uh, probably Paragraph, because I use it a lot to, to implement uh, front end. 
uh, it's a very interesting uh, module. Um, Devil, that is the, the module that includes web profiler until uh, uh, a couple of months ago. Um, I don't know. So uh, Luca, you just mentioned something that's really interesting to me. Um, Web Profiler was uh, historically a part of Develop, which is you know pretty much a module that every developer uses yes. when when building Drupal. It's critical. Um, moving forward, Web Profiler is spinning out of Develop and becoming its own standalone module. Why is that? Yes, this is this is because there's the the switch from Symphony Four to Symphony Six that uh, Drupal Ten uh, has in in core. Uh, Web Profiler uses a lot of code uh, from Symfony uh, because all the all the stuff that uh, collects information and so on are in Symfony. And between Symfony Four and Symfony Six, uh, there is a lot of changes in that part of code. So Web Profiler cannot use the same code base on Drupal Nine and Drupal Ten because Symfony is quite different for for that part. And uh, uh, the maintainer of, uh, of Devil choose to keep compatibility with all Drupal versions. So Drup uh, Devil is compatible with Drupal 8, Drupal 9, Drupal 10 with the same code base. So uh, we have to, to remove Web Profiler from, from Devil, otherwise uh, you must have to maintain two different versions, one for Drupal 9 and one for, for Drupal 10. Are you going to continue to develop Web Profiler for Drupal 9 as part of uh, Develop, or is your focus going to be exclusively on Drupal 10 moving forward? Okay, for, for simplicity, we also remove Web Profiler from, for, from Devil 9. So uh, the la latest version of Devil, the, the, the number 5, does not contain Web Profiler anymore, also on Drupal, on Drupal 9. So on the web profiler page on Drupal.org, uh, you can download the uh, web profiler for Drupal 9 or for Drupal 10. Um, I will maintain the Drupal 9 version, of course, for backticks and so on, but probably uh, I don't have time to port new features back to, to the Drupal 9 version. So some features will be available only on, uh, on Drupal 10. Um, before we jump into a demo, you, you said this was inspired by the Symphony Web Profiler. Does it use some of the same underlying components, or is it just inspired by? Like, is there any? Okay, no. See, uh, Web Profiler uses uh, a lot of code from the um, uh, Symphony components that Drupal uses. So, um, for example, all the logic uh, that uh, um, run the profile, store it. Uh, uh, run all the data collectors uh, comes directly from the Symfony component that are on the core of Drupal. So we don't re-implement anything. We are using that code. Uh, we are also using some data collectors uh, directly from, from Symfony because for example, uh, uh, routing or request response is exactly the same as in Symfony. So we are using exactly the same code and we have developed a lot of uh, new um, data collectors uh, to collect uh, uh, Drupal specific data like views or, or configuration uh, and, and so on. Awesome. Uh, do you wanna spin up a demo and, and walk us through some of the features and functionality, what you have planned? Yes, of course. So let me share this window. Now, what version of uh, Web Profile are you showing? Yes, this is the version uh, for um, Drupal 10. Uh, in this case, we are run on the latest beta of uh, Drupal 10, that is uh, beta 2. Um, and uh, you, you can see um, this because uh, the, the new graphic, the old Web Profiler uh, has a white toolbar uh, at the bottom of the, of the page. Uh, because that was the graphics uh, Symfony 4 uses. Uh, then uh, in Symfony 5, 
the symphonic community restyle the layout of, uh, of the toolbar. And uh, now that we are on Symphony 6, we can reuse uh, that, uh, that graphics and, and, and layout. <clears throat> so basically what Web Profiler does is instrument uh, a lot of uh, services in, provided by Drupal core, adding uh, the code to uh, count and, uh, and store uh, information. For example, we um, override, we wrap uh, all the services in Drupal that performs routing uh, or event subscribing, uh, uh, asset management and so on with a code that uh, collects information about uh, what Drupal is doing. And this is done for every page that is rendered, uh, that is uh, constructed by Drupal. And at the end of the request, we store that profile on, uh, on the file system. So every, for every page uh, um, rendered by Drupal, we store the profile um, in, in the file system. And then uh, we attach uh, a toolbar at the end of every page, pages, that uh, loads the stored profile to show collected information. Uh, in this case, uh, if, you, if you install Web Profiler on Drupal 10 using a Umami uh, profile, <clears throat> uh, you can see that at, at the end of the, uh, at the bottom, of the, of the home page, uh, we render this, uh, this toolbar and uh, every, um, every number, every, every piece of this toolbar is provided by a, um, a data collector that collects information, stores it in the profile, and then the, the toolbar show uh, the values uh, under, uh, under the page. Uh, at the moment, we are collecting uh, uh, a set of information. Um, we, can, uh, we can see the complete list of, uh, of collected information going to the configuration page of Web Profiler, where we uh, see all the, um, all the toolbar, to, toolbar item uh, that represents a, a data collector. Uh, in, right now, we are collecting all AJAX requests the, the page uh, is done. All assets, so uh, all CSS and JavaScript that are injected in a specific page, or blocks that are uh, loaded, loaded and rendered in the page, or cache items that uh, is uh, read from, from the cache. All configuration uh, is used to, to build that page. Uh, all database queries, um, the val is just a shortcut uh, to uh, the val commands provided by the devil module. We collect all the events uh, fired in a page and all the event subscribers that respond to that events, all the extension uh, enabled, all the form rendered. We collect a lot, uh, a lot of data about the front-end performances, uh, for example, uh, using the timing uh, Navigation Timing API, and in this new version, also collecting uh, Core Web Vitals, uh, if you are on Chrome, of course. Uh, then we collect uh, every HTTP calls made to external services, uh, every mail sent, how memory is spent building the page, all information about request and response. So uh, uh, either parameters from the request, from the response, uh, uh, and so on, uh, routing information, all the services that are used to build a page, state uh, information re retrieved from the state API, uh, information retrieved from the theme system. So which theme, uh, uh, which uh, templates are used, uh, how many time each templates uh, uh, needs to be rendered. Uh, and then uh, the time to build the page, uh, the, the complete page, all the translation that are using the page, information about the user that is logged in in the page, and uh, of course, uh, which views 
as rendered with a lot of information. So for example, if we go to the home page, uh, we can see, for example, that uh, the, the route name that uh, matches the URL we are seeing, the, um, the controller class that uh, handle uh, this route, uh, uh, the user that is logged in, uh, how many time, how many memory, uh, the list of queries executed, uh, and so on. The, the toolbar is just an overview of data. Uh, all the data are in the, in the dashboard. So when uh, uh, you click on one of these uh, widgets on the toolbar, you go on the, on the dashboard version, the dashboard part of Web Profiler, that uh, uh, is not uh, styled yet. So we are and right now we are working uh, on the design part uh, of the of the dashboard. is uh, a little bit uh, scary at the, at the moment, but uh, <laughs> all the data is there. It's not pretty printed basically. Uh, so for example, for the request data collector, we can see uh, again the name, the, the, the controller class, the, the controller method. Uh, uh, and all the information sent to the uh, to the controller, for example, the um, the services uh, that control the access to that route, uh, cookies, uh, and so on. For example, for the database, uh, we have all the executed queries uh, that uh, that are executed to build this page. Uh, how many time every query uh, needs to be executed? We can swap, swap a placeholder. We can copy the query to be uh, re-executed, for example, to the bug purposes or so on. We can explain. Uh, we can ask my MySQL to explain the query to, to understand if you can uh, improve the performance of that specific query. Uh, and so on. We can see all the services loaded or not loaded for this page, all the assets. So the list of CSS, the list of JavaScript, a list of set, the Drupal settings that are injected in the, in the page uh, and so on. For example, one, uh, one useful thing can be- um, Could you, could you yes. show the cache? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the cache, in the cache tab, we, we show uh, every um, bin, every cache bin, and for every for every cache bin, we um, we list all the cache ID that are um, loaded for this page. If this uh, this uh, cache uh, load was an hit or a miss, and uh, uh, if that cache uh, is tagged uh, with uh, some cache tag, uh, we also see all the all the cache tag for uh, for uh, for specific uh, cache items. You mentioned earlier, you know, you showed roughly two dozen of these data collectors, you know, the, the database, the front end, and you could enable or disable what's shown in the toolbar. Does that also disable what metrics are collected or is it just not show it in the toolbar to save space? Okay, no, uh, you just disable uh, the, um, the widget on the toolbar. Data, uh, all, all the data are, uh, are always collected uh, for, for, every, for every page. Is there any sort of overhead in collecting this data, like a cost to observation? You know, you're collecting, you know, two dozen data collectors, storing that information to disk. Does that impact the actual performance of the page that you're monitoring, or yes, is it immaterial? Yeah, yes, of course. Uh, you you have a so, some sort of uh, impact on, uh, on on the rendering of the page because uh, the, this 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 collecting phase, uh, of course, web profiler. Uh, is not to be used on production because uh, uh, is uh, at the moment is just uh, a tool for um, developing and uh, understanding what your Drupal is doing on 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 local uh, because uh, um, the the effort to ma mainly to uh, to brought all the results on disk is uh, as an impact we do we uh, we brought uh, the result on disk. Um, on a, um, 
kernel terminate event. So just after the page uh, start to be sending, uh, start, start to be delivered to the, to the browser. Uh, so at the very end of the, of the response, uh, but of course uh, an impact, uh, there, there is an impact. So you try and delay and optimize the impact. There, there is an impact. Is it material or is it immaterial? Like in other words, like does the act of monitoring impact performance to the point where it might slow down a page that, you know, would otherwise be faster? No, it's quite uh, unnoticeable uh, on uh, on a local machine. So you can you can keep web profiler uh, on when you develop a website and you don't see any. And any differences, and is that the the recommendation? You you know when you're developing, you know you always have the web profiler running in the toolbar. Yes, yes, because uh, uh, I always need to to understand uh, where the controller is, or if a database query has been executed with the specific parameters and so on. So, so yes, yeah, it's really it's it's really awesome. I can can understand why. Uh, this module was always um, used within um, the um, devil model module because there's so much that is is like so useful developer information like uh, what form is this on um, where can I find it and then you look into the source code of the HTML and um, you find the form ID and you grab the source code for it and um, web profiler just makes this so much simpler. Pro probably, if I want to find the search form at the top, I would find it in the in the bottom metrics here somewhere. Is what I assume. This the search form. Yes, yeah. uh, it's uh, it's here the the search block form. And uh, now I'm sharing all the all, um, just the browser window. But uh, every every time a web profiler collect um, a class name with a method name. Uh, that that class name with method name is a link to the to the code in uh, your ID. So, for example, uh, I have this project on PHP Storm, and if I click uh, on the on the class name uh, here on the on the toolbar, um, PHP Storm open, opens that file uh, at, at, at that specific line uh, automatically, and uh, uh, you can configure also. Uh, the um, the ID you are using, for example, PHP Storm or TextMate, uh, Visual Studio Code, and so on. And if you are running your website in a container or in a virtual machine uh, or in a way that uh, the the path of the code on, for example, the Docker container is not the same as in your <clears throat> local environment. You can map the uh, remote path with the, the local path, so Web Profiler rewrote the path of every of every file to be <clears throat> correct on your local. So it's really open, awesome. Open it. Uh, uh, I really have, love that. This thing um, is insane. It logs anything and everything and shows you in a really neatly organized format what's going on and makes it super easy to dig into it. Exactly. Yeah, uh, one question I had, um, and that is, um, can you, um, you have like an option like purge profiles or something like that. Um, is this purge profiles, um, are the profiles like pretty large or are they, is it pretty, pretty okay from a standpoint of um, how much space they use? The, the dimension of each profile uh, can be it can be huge. Um, it is stored as a uh, in a compressed format, so uh, um, it's uh, it's uh, manageable. But uh, let me check, um, for example, right now a, a single profile. Uh, Okay, on my local installation, uh, uh, for example, a single profile is about uh, 140 kilobytes. That's nothing, I mean. So it's, it's, it's not so much, but 
that uh, you, you just keep in mind that uh, every single request uh, store a profile. So if you have a page that calls uh, 10, uh, that, that performs 10 Ajax requests, you will have uh, 11 storage profile because one for the main page and one for every, one for every request basically. So uh, it can be, it can be uh, big. You can also uh, choose to um, purge all the profiles uh, on cache clear if you want. Uh, and also you have a, a, an option to, to purge all the profiles directly from the uh, settings page if, if, uh, if you want. The, the um, Drupal 9 version of Web, of Web Profiler can also store uh, profiles on database uh, if you want, but uh, the Symfony Web Profiler dismiss uh, this part. So the, the Symfony toolbar can store data only on file system. And uh, in effect, uh, on the, we, we, we had some issues uh, because the table in the database uh, grows uh, a lot. So we, we, we deprecate that, uh, that storage and right now we can only store uh, profiles on, uh, on the file system. The irony yeah, I mean is that the performance profiling tool crashes your website. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it, it shouldn't be used in production. So hopefully that's not an option, <laughs> an issue. Um, and I can see why. Um, I think the data collectors in a way could still be useful if you needed to do some trace. Um, like, I mean, what you can do in production is profile every request. That's just way too much data. Exactly. Um, and also not needed. But what you can do is you can do like sample profiling, like every thousands request or whatever, depending on how many requests you get, what your hardware is like, or every 10,000 requests. You could create a profile and then like uh, just collect the data and then download it somehow and, um, and look at some sample traces from your users. And I think that's just pretty, pretty cool overall because you, you have. Um, abilities to essentially, um, yeah, I mean, it, it will, will probably not replace new, new Relic, but you could even send that data into New Relic or services like that and, and just get, get much more information that way. Um, I'm not sure if you ever heard of cache metrics, um, Luca? Sorry? Have you ever heard of cache metrics, the module cache underscore metrics? Mm, no. No, it, it's a module that was written by um, uh, Mo Schweitzman, um, who is also working for Tech One right now, okay. um, and um, famously known as the inventor of Drush. And Cache Metrics allows you to essentially send cache data, like cache tag invalidations, and how many cache hits, cache misses, etc. You have to New Relic, and then you can visualize them there, and uh, that's pretty cool. So yeah. I just want for, for those listening or watching this uh, podcast, just uh, bring that out um, because it's a, it's a nice, because that is something you can use in production and which uh, is really helpful and has helped us uh, find a lot of performance problems here. So, and, and I, I really love it that you have like those tools that are local and that you, you use for then further analyzing tools and then you have these other things. But yeah, I love your data collectors and just the, the abstractive way you've built it that you have like this data collection machines. And yeah, as soon as data is collected, you can do with it whatever you want. Uh, one question I had is, um, if I have like XHPROF enabled or things like that, would that trace also show up as in the um, web profiler toolbar? Like, do you have some kind of integration there? Yes, <clears throat> right now for just for Drupal 9, for the web profiler for Drupal 9, if you enable also XHProof, uh, uh, you can add a new, you can turn on a new data collector that uh, show the information collected by XHProof. You can directly go to the dashboard of uh, XHProof to, to see the results. Uh, for Drupal 10 is not yet available. Cool. When is Thanks. the D10 version gonna come out in what do you need to do to get there? You know, we, we, you know, you showed some pages that you're still theming. 
you know, is, is it mostly polish or is there features and functionality that you're still working on? Yes, I hopefully it will be completed by, by the release of Drupal 10 in December. Uh, the main uh, missing points uh, are the layout of the dashboard and uh, um, the, the log in, in the reports page of uh, uh, all collected profiles. Uh, that is, uh, that um, is uh, needed because uh, <clears throat> right now you cannot uh, compare uh, two different profiles. So uh, if you want to uh, understand if some change um, is uh, improving or, or not uh, a web page, you have to load that page, open the profile, do the change, uh, reload the page, open the new profile, and then manually compare uh, if numbers are better or... <clears throat> uh, so uh, um, what the web profiler for Drupal 9 does is uh, adding a page in the reports uh, uh, section <clears throat> of the backend uh, where all the, all the profiles are listed. <clears throat> so you can reopen uh, a profile you have recorded in the, in the past. <clears throat> so um, right now, uh, the layout of the dashboard and list of the collected pages are missing uh, uh, the missing uh, part. All other, all the stuff that collects uh, information is, uh, is complete. You, uh, you mentioned that there are some new features coming out in the, in the Drupal 10 version, uh, Core Web Vitals being one of them. Um, you know, that's how we, you know, recently met at DrupalCon Prague. We were doing a talk with Google about, you know, improving Drupal's Core Web Vitals, you know, for uh, folks out there who aren't familiar with them, you know, really important metrics to help measure, you know, the end user experience, the performance of your page which is directly correlated with things like time on site, sales, revenue conversions, things of that nature. Um, can you show us that feature? Is it in this version yet? Yes, it is uh, in this version, but I have to stop share because I'm sharing Firefox and on Firefox, uh, this feature is not supported because we are using APIs from, from Google Chrome. So just a second, I stop the share here. And I share the same website on Chrome, uh, this one, okay. <clears throat> so this is the same website, the same URL, uh, the same, but uh, now we are on Chrome. And here in the, in the front end data collector, so the collector that collects uh, information directly in the front end, <clears throat> other than um, information from the performance timing API, for example, the time to first byte or the time, uh, for data download or building of the uh, the tree of the HTML, uh, we also have uh, information uh, from Core Web Vitals API. Uh, for example, uh, <clears throat> the largest uh, contentful paint or uh, first input delay, and so on. Some some metrics are uh, calculated only when the page is unloaded. So, for example, uh, uh, the CLS is not available now because uh, I have to uh, open, for example, a new tab to, to have the browser calculate it. Uh, but uh, just when the, when the metrics appear, uh, I have it in the, in the toolbar. And uh, on the dashboard site, uh, of course, it's not styled yet, uh, but uh, uh, we have all the information required to analyze all metrics all those metrics. Uh, for example, for LCP, we can see that uh, this, uh, the image in the background is, uh, <clears throat> is the one that, uh, that causes this, uh, th that is the, the largest uh, uh, contentful paint, uh, and so on. Uh, the first input delay, all the information is stored in the profile, so we can do these things here. First of all, draw all the information in a pretty way to be understandable. And then we can use this information <clears throat> to uh, compare 
to different version of the same page and also to suggest uh, the suggest developers what to improve to improve or what to change to improve those those metrics that's example. really actionable information i mean that, that, i think that's super exciting because you know there's so much data coming out of this system um understanding you know which of the you know 24 collectors and data to look at how is my site performing not performing you know a key part of the core web vitals in those three metrics is measuring to standards and so saying you know if like largest contentful paint is you know greater than 2.5 seconds you know that you know is yellow or red right um that's that's a problem that you should be aware of um, and so, it, you, you know, what you're saying is your tool is going to give you uh, some insight into warning signs, you know, hey, there's a problem here, you're falling below industry standards that are going to negatively impact, you know, your user experience. Oh, and also click here, because here's ways that you can then optimize these different metrics to improve the performance of your site, like, say, implementing lady, you know, um, activating lazy loading in core for specific aspects. Yes, we can do this uh, uh, also because in the same profile, for example, we have all those data and also the list of enabled extensions. So we can we can understand uh, and we can suggest to the user which, which extension to enable or disable, or if you have some database query that is uh, too slow, we can point uh, the user to to that query to improve it. Uh, so having uh, all those data is quite useful to suggest how to, to Im improve performance. I had a question, you have like a rating here, like good rating, but do you also show like the rating on the toolbar or with colors like green? Right now, yellow? no, no, it's not shown on the toolbar, but of course we can, uh, we can do that because uh, uh, all those information are collected uh, uh, on the front end. So we can uh, print whatever we want here. Uh, uh, also, we don't change the color at the moment of this uh, data collector if performance uh, is not uh, good enough, like uh, we do for the database, for example. Uh, but of course, we can, uh, we can change the color, for example, if uh, some core byte tells is not good yeah I, I would love that because that's that being yellow um would immediately alert people of course and tell them like hey your image is really screwing up things and maybe optimize it or think of a little bit different way to do things etc like that so yeah that's really it cool is. and i think an invaluable tool in combination with things like lighthouse with some more uh metrics uh, where you can then compare like the real metrics of how I would experience those but I can also always in Chrome and other browsers just set my connection to be hey and I'll have a really slow connection and now I'm I'm gonna gonna test the site out and look at how my core web vitals are then and and really really use that part yeah but yeah I love your module uh Luca it's 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 really Thanks. fantastic <laughs> really really great work and uh, so useful and I think the only thing I would wish for the dashboard but it's probably a larger community task is to decide on some kind of um, like uh, graphing API, a graphing library or whatever and just visually show cache hit rate 90% or 100% or more those those aggregation things like like um, way with one glance the tables and all data it's, it's fantastic that we have it but it would be like like my vision for the dashboard would be at the top of that for especially the caching part. You have like 100% cache hit rate, which you usually should have in Drupal or 90% or 0% or whatever there is and find uncacheable things that are just not cacheable. And um, yeah, I think that these kind of um, uh, meter metrics, <laughs> I would say averages 90 percentile um, it's kind of like the, the next step um, when you when you really want to um, to look at those those things, especially where you're collecting a lot of data in that. Yeah, yes, this of is, course. 
this is really amazing. If you're developing Drupal applications, you need to be using this module. It's, you know, you're failing at your job if you're not. Um, Luca, you know, we got to wrap up. Uh, we're almost out of time, but before we do so, one quick question. Speaking of features and functionalities and wish lists, um, is there anything that you would love the community to do to help you out, you know, as you're racing towards this D10 release? Are you looking for contributors? Yes, of course, always. Um, a part of the of the code, uh, I need a, a hand uh, probably on the on the design of the dashboard because I'm I'm not a front end uh, developer, so uh, <clears throat> it's not easier to me to to write CSS and so on. Uh, maybe documentation uh, it can be very useful. Uh, also for um, providing new data collectors because maybe um, other module, module maintainers uh, can wrote the data collectors for their specific module um, that can be useful to, to expose, uh, expose data. Uh, and also of, uh, at the moment, uh, uh, the module doesn't have uh, basically any tests. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> again, uh, developers that can help me on testing on broad test for, for web profiler. And <clears throat> again, every, every ideas or suggestion, it's, uh, it's, it's welcome. So anybody that can contribute, it's very, it, it can be very helpful. Definitely. Please download and check out the module and give Luca a hand because this thing generates so much value. Uh, Luca, thank you so much for joining Fabian and I. We really appreciate the walkthrough. This is this is really is amazing. Um, to the folks listening and watching, uh, we'll throw some links into the show description notes to uh, Core Web Vitals, to Web Profiler, and Luca's other modules. Uh, if you like this talk, please remember to upvote, subscribe, and share it out. Uh, you can check out our past Tag One team talks at tagone.com/ttt. That's tag the number one.com slash TTT. Uh, we'd also love your feedback. Uh, nothing makes me happier to get your emails, feedback from the show. You can email us at TTT at tag one.com. And again, huge thank you, Luca. This was amazing. Uh, and to everyone who tuned in, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Michael.